Okay, Tony, 80 minutes away from another grand final, third in the row. Is it going to be Warrington's year? It'll be nice to get there to start with, and that's all we're focusing on. Um, you know, we understand the outcome of this game is uh, is a big one, you know, and uh, after that we'll 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 see. But uh, um, yeah, we've we've got to earn the right there. Um, we've earned the right for the last two years to get there, but uh, you know, not quite finished it off. Um, so we want to uh, earn the right first, and then we'll. You know, discuss any or in talk about anything after that but we're also very proud of what we've done for the last four or five years in uh, in terms of what we've achieved and um, we want to keep pressing for those those opportunities but you've got to earn the right and that's by going out and playing good rugby league and we're, we're finding a way at the moment um, we haven't done a complete 80 minutes but last week was closer I thought our intensity was there for a uh, most of the game and um, I thought we were pretty good for a lot of it, particularly our defence. I thought our defence was terrific and um, that's been improving for the last few weeks so hopefully we can keep on improving in that area. We'll have to um, against a class team like Wigan. After all the transition you've been through this season though, you must be very pleased on the overall season that you got to the Challenge Cup semi-final again and you're knocking on the door of another grand final. Well, we're there and thereabouts, aren't we? Um, with, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, a, a number of changing personnel. So, yeah, pretty good. Um, you know, it's, it could be very good. Um, you know, and uh, that depends a little bit on you know, uh, probably uh, the outcome of Friday night's game to some degree. And, uh, and then you know, if we're to progress after that, it could be unbelievably excellent or um, just pretty good. So, you yeah. know, we're... We'll concentrate on this weekend and uh, on Friday night and look forward to it. You know, we're we're uh, really enjoying our training. We're pl- and training well and enjoying being together and you know, we don't want that to end. So there's an incentive there to keep keep uh, playing well and, and uh, so we can keep turning up the training. And you know, It's been a long year but we enjoy what we do and uh, we want it to keep going for as long as we can. doesn't get much bigger than Warrington and Wigan though, does it? Not in the last four or five years. I've been saying, uh, I think the Warrington-Wigan matches have been close to the best matches each year for the last you know, three, four years, really. And uh, they've been really high quality and um, uh, enjoyable to watch and enjoyable to be part of and sometimes heartbreaking and sometimes you know, very rewarding as well. So, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, you know, it'll live up to it. Uh, expectations as far as uh, what we've seen in the past from two very good teams and, and a great atmosphere over at their ground. Um, we take a great following that stand up behind us and you know cheer us on and cheer us on. So um, they're really important for us this week. Has the journey felt any different going from fifth? Uh, yes and no. Um, except except that you it's sudden death that first week. There's no difference. Um, <laughs> You know, there really is no difference. Well, apart from the home advantage situation. That, that, that's right, but that's in your in your first week, you know, and um, so it's sudden death all the way for everybody. We we just did it one week earlier, <laughs> and and you know, with a home advantage, it's in some ways it's better than going fourth. Um, when you finish fourth, you go to you know, the top team in the competition away. Um, often you get your backside. Kicked, um, you lose momentum, a bit of loss of confidence, and then you have to go and play somebody who won the last week and is in good form, and you know that can be a difficult thing to do, and uh, you know that's what happened uh, you know, around uh, the Huddersfield Giants. Sort of, it's hurt them really in the way that where they and Cass as well. So anyway, um, you know we've enjoyed what we've done so far. Um, we haven't quite finished yet, but. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll give it a really good shake this week. Uh, we've got the 19 here. Your disappointment that Benny Westwood's not been able to make it? Oh, disappointed, but not surprised. Um, from his injury, it was always going to be if we made it through the grand final, well, that's a chance that he'd play. Um, what we all hope in the, is that Benny you know, repairs quicker than normal and you know does something superhuman to live up to his super Benny Westwood tag and... Uh, you know, come back earlier, but uh, that's not the case. Um, so we're not going to do that uh, to Benny, and 
yeah, so he misses out and we've got Simon Griggs out. Um, we've got to do a fitness check on um, Matty Russell tomorrow and um, you know we're in pretty good shape other than those two definite injuries. I was going to say, quite a surprise that Matty Russell's uh, back in the frame after the injury he received. Yeah, 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 it was been nasty. He's only, the lacerations of his lips and mouth have only just healed up. Um, he's had the news that he's probably going to, well, he's going to lose his front teeth uh, at some stage. Uh, but they can be replaced and repaired. Um, so to bring him back to you know normality. Um, but he is in, still in a little bit of pain. Um, well, a bit of pain when he when he's trained. He's only just resumed training today, and uh, we'll run the eye over him tomorrow. If he's right, well, there'll be a great temptation to play him. If if he's not right, well, you know, no way will we play him. So. You know, it's up to Matty really. Um, we'll see how he goes in training tomorrow. But I mean, if he does make it, you have got a selection headache because Stefan Rapsford performed so well at the fullback last week. Yeah, yeah excellent. Um, not surprising. Um, wherever you put Steph, he performs well. So, you know, I've got a dilemma of if I pick Matty, I've got a, an excellent fullback at, at fullback and, and Stefan playing somewhere else and playing excellent. Um, or I've got the dilemma of. Maddie's not available to play, and I've got Stefan playing excellent at fullback. So, um, yeah, pretty good problem to have. But you must have been delighted that such a versatile player and such a talented player has committed his future to Warrington as well. Uh, without a doubt, yeah, without a doubt. We're, we're getting a good core of players who want to be here and they want to be part of Warrington and they want to be part of this club, and, you know, uh, that's important. Um, um, it's uh, enjoyable to work with these guys and uh, I enjoy being their coach and being part of you know, a club that continues to grow and and compete and uh, you know we may not win everything all the time and but we're in there competing all the time and uh, you know that's a progressive club for mine um, in sport there's no guarantees on anything no matter who you sign and uh, but we've got some hard-working, talented young people there who are doing their best each and every week, so you can't ask too much more than that. Now, you've already announced a couple of signings for next season. Any more tweaks to be done to strengthen the squad again for when you go again next year? Not much. There won't be much movement. We don't, as you know, in the past, we don't have much movement of personnel, and you know, last year was probably our most extreme movement of players that we've had in the five years that I've been here and uh, it, there's minor minor changes for next year as well so um, we're you know I'm not going to say that we, we're highly looking out for anybody but at the same time we're not closed off just yet I think we've got a little bit of room to give a move but, but um, we're pretty settled I'm really pleased with the squad that we've put together in terms of competitiveness and depth and you know I, and I think, uh, you know, strengthening in some ways. At the end of the season, we have the Man of Steel. Chris Hill's been nominated. He's done almost a clean sweep of awards here. Mm. Um, just shows what a great player you've got in him as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Hilly, I love him. And, you know, he just, week in, week out, just performs. And uh, Deserving Man of Steel? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think they're all worthy shortlisters. I think two of them stand out and um, uh, one, either one of the two um, I'd be uh, most pleased for, um, particularly Hilly. I think uh, you know, he's had an enormous consistent season and uh, even sometimes when the team hasn't been at its best and Hilly's been not too far off his. And um, yeah, it'd be fantastic if he, and worthy of a, of a winner like that. But um, you know, it'd be nice if, uh, I'm sure he, he's looking for some other things as well in terms of finishing off his year for his team, his club, you know, his country. Uh, um, so he's got some big things ahead, Chris, but um, I'm sure he's just focusing on getting the game right on Friday night. OK, Tony, thanks for your time as always. Good luck on Friday and hopefully third time lucky. Thank you.